who's your daddy? It's Necros. No! <laughs> Swaz Dulac, you filthy knuckleheads. How the hell are ya? Today I will attempt to make you understand Necros more intimately than ever before. Whoa, okay, that's gross. Ugh. Come on, don't be like that. You know you like it. Anyways this zombie boy is a pretty amazing and creepy little shit. Sadly though, over the years, Necros has been reduced to nothing more than the farm god. To be fair, currently and despite other options, Necros is in fact hands down the best farming frame because no other frame can produce as much loot as he can. However, this anorexic freakazoid has a lot more to bring to the table. Not just fucking farming. Dear salty rhino mains, grab your salt and brace yourselves for what I am about to say. NANI?! Necros, is a tank. I hate him so much! Quite a while ago, I actually did a solo survival video with this creepy necrophiliac to demonstrate that as a Necros, you do not really have any business being down every 5 minutes and bleeding out like a little sissy. I am pretty sure that most of the time, players do not know how to modify him because his skills are misleading in a way and over the years a lot of nonsensical rumors have been advertised. No more. I will try to clear everything up for you punks and allow you to be necros gods after this video. So let's get to the goddamn content already. Okay then, the first thing you need to know about this discount Christopher Walken is that he comes with a build and healing return. Which means that for every enemy that is killed within a 10 meter radius around Necros, you will receive 5 health points. This will synergize nicely with low delts that enable health regeneration. So using him in favor of melee combat will greatly improve your survivability. As for Necros first ability. Soul Punch. A blow so powerful, it turns the... Just wait a minute. A blow? So powerful. Let me swallow you. Holy crap. I just realized that Necros is a zombie rapist. What a sick individual. Loki though, am I the only one that feels oddly turned on anyway? Soul Punch knocks the soul out of a single enemy target. The ejected soul then becomes a projectile that will cause an AoE effect on enemies in range, if, and only if the ejected soul hits an enemy nearby. Now this ability's description is an over-exaggeration at best, but can still be useful. I would not recommend using it for sheer damage dealing though. Because the potential is uninteresting. I'd prefer, to exploit Warframe's broken physics system and use it to crowd control a tough, bastard enemy that is giving you, or your team a hard time. Here is how the exploit works. If the punched out soul, hits a hard surface like a door, or a wall, the soul will bounce off of the surface and catapult the targeted enemy into oblivion. You can achieve this almost every time if you make sure to elevate yourself irrelevant to the target. So try to cast soul punch while looking down on enemies. This will cause the soul to bounce off of the damn floor and, in most cases, yield all benefits of the ability. Also, while the target is bouncing off of walls, it is basically incapacitated for a longer time. You can use the same effect to punch enemies off the map altogether which is essentially a one-shot kill as they will not respawn. One last thing you might want to know about soul punch is, headshots deal more damage. So if for some weird reason you, actually do use necros for damage, then make sure you target them pumpkin heads. Let's move on. Ability 2 <laughs> Discount Jump Scare This ability is very self-explanatory and although it is easy to understand, some of you fuckers still do not seem to get it. So let me help your oblivious ass out. Terrify will Mac enemies want to shit themselves and run away. Beside the obvious 15 meter radial crowd control, this ability's best attribution is a 20% armor reduction. Which means, 
you can effectively strip enemy armor using Terrafly. Up to 20 fools within range can be affected by this at default and, the best thing, the armor reduction will stack upon successive casts. If you do decide to build your necros in this direction you will want a lot of strength and range so you can affect more than 20 enemies, and affect a much larger area, and, strip way more armor. However, this technique is nearly impossible to balance nicely. Just saying. Moving on. Desecrate. Most of you pervy little shits are probably most familiar with this ability. However, I'm almost willing to bet that most of you still don't know shit about Desecrate. So let's hop into some facts about it. First off, Desecrate has an effective default range of 25 meters. Which is plenty for your sick corpse parties y'all be having. Also, Desecrate does not, allow me to repeat, does absolutely not, cause more reactant to drop from Fisher missions. Another misconception of this ability is that it does not desecrate vaporized enemies. Like for example vaporized by Nova's Molecular Prime. I can assure you, this belief is a pile of stinking dog shit at the very best. Necros, can and will desecrate every enemy that leaves behind a corpse by default. So these little kamikaze bastards here will not be affected. Nor will bosses except Captain Toxalot, the Grenier sissy sisters that no one ever remembers, and these three retarded musketeers. The next super important thing you will need to keep in mind with Desecrate, is the fact that you cannot increase its effectiveness with mods. Desecrate will always occur on a corpse within range randomly with a one second delay between each desecration. Under normal circumstances I would not be bothering you with these TDO's numbers however, in this case it is important to know. Why though? Because dead enemy corpses disappear at different times. Grenier and corpus bodies for example disappear after 15 seconds. Infested after only 5. Enemies affected by molecular prime after 3 seconds and assholes affected by Saren's miasma, will disappear after 1 goddamn second. This means for example, if you kill 10 Grenier immediately, it will take 10 seconds to desecrate them all. Plus another 2 seconds delay after casting. If you kill 100 Grenier in an instant and then desecrate, you will wind up desecrating only 13 bodies since this will take 15 seconds to desecrate. After that, the leftover 87 bodies will simply disappear. Same goes for the other factions and situations I just mentioned only even less. However, you can help fix this by using necros like a fucking fruit ninja. And dismember your enemies. The thing is, Desecrate will count each individual body part as a full corpse and thus, desecrate the single enemy up to six times if, you cut them up into six pieces. This will even work on intact corpses just as well. So cut up the dead bodies too. There is hands down no better weapon to do this than the comb. Here is a list of other decent alternatives though. Just in case you are retarded and do not like the comb for some reason. Last note I will make on desecration is this, using multiple necrosses in a squad will in fact desecrate much faster and ultimately, more efficiently as a workload is split between two necrosses. Enough of this goddamn ability. Let's move to the next. Pervy Zombie Orgy Necros awakens up to 7 zombie corpses to assist him in battle. Luckily, this ability is pretty simple. But here are a few facts. The number of white walkers you can summon, is always 7, irregardless of modifications. Your zombie slaves will lose 3% of their original health as damage over time. Which is basically nothing. You can however mod for more duration and slap on a rejuvenation to even reverse this effect. Which means that your zombies will not die unless killed by other enemies. That however, is not recommendable. See the thing is, Necro's zombies will copy whatever level the enemies you killed were when they died. So if you had killed say, a level 100 bombard and then cast zombie boy mode, then your zombie will also be level 100. 
On top of that, your rotting zombie shadows will gain a bunch of buffs including, more health, more shield and more damage output. The problem is though, if the zombies never die, and you progress to higher levels, at some point your enemies will simply outclass your dead clones. So you will want them to die after some time so that you can refresh them and thus, making them even stronger every time. Speaking of refreshing, Shadows of the Dead has a painfully long cast animation. You might want to take cover or even cast Terrify first, before casting this. In case you for some reason do not want them to die, you can replenish their health manually by casting again. If all of the shadows are alive when you recast, the animation will be a lot quicker. If however, only a single one is dead when you recast, then Necros will perform the full cast animation. In my opinion, the best use out of this ability is its crowd control. Since all of your dead zombie freaks will distract enemy fire, your Necros will take way less damage than usual. One last thing. Remember earlier when I said, I won't mention anything about Besecrate again? Well, I lied. Deal with it. Contrary to common belief, you absolutely can desecrate your own zombies when they die. However, they will only yield extra health orbs. But not more loot. And, Shadows of the Dead do not affect the enemy spawn rate at all. So get that dumb shit out of your head right now. Okay then you fox, are you ready for the build? Here you go. I call this build, Tank the Dew. That's right. You heard correctly. Tank. The Dew. You can blame this bitch waifu short for that. Loki though, she is hilarious and even I subscribe to her stupid channel. But don't tell her that because I will never hear the end of it. Anyways. Now that you should have a better understanding of Bonadu, you should understand my reasoning for modding him this way. Take your time and you will notice that there is a lot of synergy going on here to benefit my tanky play style. Now if I wasn't such a lazy twat, I might actually add another format and perhaps replace Stretch with Equilibrium. Although I really do not like that mod and that actually is not as great for Necros as it is hyped up to be. Or I could also replace Stretch with Pump Flow. Which would benefit that quick thinking quite a bit. In any case, give this build a try and tweak it to your liking. It is after all, your life so do whatever the fuck you want to do. It's time to like and subscribe to this shitty channel. And fuck off. Somebody get that kid a sandwich.